The readings from the Holy Gospel according to the evangelist St. Luke. Glory to the Lord. Glory to thee. Let us attend. At that time Jesus arrived at the country of the Gadarenes, which is over against Galilee. And when he went forth to land, there met him out of the city a certain man, which had devils a long time, and wear no clothes, neither abode in any house, but in the tombs. When he saw Jesus, he cried out and fell down before him, and with a loud voice said, What have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou Son of God most high? I beseech thee, torment me not. For he had commanded the unclean spirit to come out of the man, for oftentimes it had caught him, and he was kept bound in chains and in fetters. And he brake the bands, and was driven to the devil into the wilderness. And Jesus asked him, saying, What is thy name? And he said, Legion, because many devils were entered into him. And they besought him that he would keep, he would not command them to go out into the deep. And there was a herd of many swine feeding on the mountain. And they besought him that he would suffer them to enter into them. And he suffered them. Then went the devils out of the man, and entered into the swine. And the herd ran violently down a steep place into the lake, and were choked. When they that fed them saw what was done, they fled, and went and told it in the city and in the country. Then they went out to see what was done, and came to Jesus and found the man, out of whom the devils were departed, sitting at the feet of Jesus, clothed, and in his right mind, and they were afraid. They also which saw it told them by what means that he was possessed of the devils was healed. Then the whole multitude of the country of the gatherings round about besought him to depart from them, for they were taken with great fear, and he went up into the ship and returned back again. Now the man out of whom the devils were departed besought him that he might be with him, but Jesus sent him away, saying, Return to thine own house, and show how great things God hath done unto thee. And he went his way, and published throughout the city how great things Jesus had done unto him. The Lord said, Fear not, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Sell that ye have, and give alms. Provide yourselves bags which wax not old, a treasure in the heavens that faileth not, where no thief approacheth, neither moth corrupteth. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Let your loins be girded about and your lights burning, and ye yourselves, like unto men that wait for their Lord when he will return from the wedding, that when he cometh and knocketh, that may he, they may open unto him immediately. Blessed are those servants whom the Lord, when he cometh, shall find watching. Verily I say unto you, that he shall gird himself, and make them to sit down to meet, and will come forth and serve them. And if he shall come in the second watch, or in the third watch, and find them so, blessed are those servants. And this know, that if the good men of the house had known what hour the thief would come, he would have watched, and not have suffered his house to be broken through. Be ye therefore also ready, for the Son of Man cometh at an hour when ye think not. Oh. Be ready. That's the summation of today's gospel. Be ready. We're always thinking about preparations as people. We're always planning ahead, getting ready for the future. Aren't we? But God says, get ready. He says, get ready for me to meet you. Be ready. This is the most important thing. And so Jesus today teaches us, and he gives us, I think, a lot of food for thought, asking us to evaluate our lives in light of his great approaching coming and us meeting him. This is what we need to be preparing for. 
And this is what God says that we need to be ready for. The Lord sets this passage in a place in Luke 12 that speaks much about the kingdom of heaven in different ways. It speaks about like being like lilies of the field which appear. He speaks about, after this passage, about the judgment that comes upon those that aren't ready. And as a matter of fact, I should interject here, that the, in, in the passage that immediately follows us, if you read this, you'll see that God speaks about the exact same servant that prepared himself as being blessed. And he says, but if that same servant hadn't prepared, he'd be cast into outer darkness. The same person. Take heed. Be ready. The Lord speaks so, and he comforts us at the beginning of this passage. He says, it's your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. God wants you to be in his kingdom. No matter what state you might be in today, God welcomes you into his kingdom. He wants you to be with him. Jesus came into this earth as a man, and he did many miracles, and he spoke, and we, and we saw in the passage that we read in the other gospel this morning, how he healed a man who was full of demons. There's no one beyond God's reach. There's no one that God doesn't want to save. There's no person that God doesn't want to save. And he says, here to start us off, to comfort us, he says, fear not, little flock. It's your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. God wants you. He's encouraging you. And what follows, he wants to encourage you to say, he wants you to be ready for him. He wants you to enter into his kingdom. But he sets aside some things that the person that wants to be in this kingdom, if they really want it, does. Salvation is a serious business, my friends. It really is. And I think that one of the reasons why in Orthodox churches, you stand for the gospel, and we don't do it so much because we have so many people singing in the choir, I guess, but you should sit during the epistle. Because what Jesus says in the gospel is the penultimate truth that everything else circulates around. Whether it be the prophets, the creation narrative, or the apocalypse, everything centers around his words. There's nothing more important than what Jesus Christ says. There's no time in heaven or on earth where what he says isn't the top priority for every single one that wants to follow him into his kingdom. Serious business. And so he starts off with some serious sayings about what it is, it is to be ready for those that want to welcome, be welcomed into his kingdom. He says, first of all, he says, sell that you have. Sell it. Sell what you have. Don't keep it. God's calling us to remove possessions and the earthly entanglements of things from our life. And he says, and he says, give it away. In other words, don't take your money and accumulate the money from the possessions. He's saying, sell what you have and give it. And he says, in so doing, you will have treasure in the heavens that falls not away, that never fails. It's a hard saying for us, I think, this laying up of things. But Jesus says, there's an apocalypse coming for your flesh and for your body. It's going to die. And he says, you need to be ready. And the way you get ready is not by trying to hold on to the things of this world. It's by getting rid of them. This is the penultimate truth, I think, that faces us who are concerned about the coming of Christ. As we see signs and things are happening in the world, and many of you are concerned about the Lord's coming. Good. But the way to prepare for it is counterintuitive to what the world would teach us. And so Jesus says, sell what you have. And he says, give alms. Put it in bags, don't wax old, the heavenly bags. And you'll have treasure in heaven for your end. Remember, don't accumulate. You've got to give. And the question is, do we trust him enough to do that? Or are we really relying on ourselves to get through hard times? I think as people, we, are ten we have a tendency to want to accumulate a fortress of money and things and possessions around ourselves to build this great edifice that will protect us in time of trouble. When Job said, naked came I, naked go I. You don't take anything but with you. And God's warning us here, very important, accumulating things in this world creates a real problem for you to go into the next one and meet the judge well. He says this, <coughs> to kind of cap this off, he says, where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. In other words, don't delude yourself when you have all this treasure and you keep it to yourself, even if it's not a lot in, in, in absolute terms, to you it may be a lot, 
by holding on to all these things and creating your own fortress, your heart is now attached to those things. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. It's a very dangerous thing. If you have the things, they will allure your heart. They will captivate your heart. They will draw your heart. And in so doing, possibly take you totally away from the Lord at time. We get hardened to God when we're attacked to things. He says this very simply. Where your treasure is, what your treasure is, there will your heart be also. If we believe that, then we need to lay up treasure in heaven and give away these earthly things and not be so consumed with building an earthly empire. He goes on and says to be ready. Not only do we need to cut off the things of this world from our sight and move them away and put God in our sight and Him as our trust, but he says this. He says we need to have our loins girded, girded about, and our lights burning. There's a commercial about, I think it's Motel 6, it says, keep the light on. Well, this is what God's saying to us. He's saying, keep that light on. Keep the light on for Jesus because his coming or your death might surprise you. That light needs to be on all the time. It never needs to shut off and, and like he's welcome now when the light's on and it will shut it off. It's not welcome at other times. God's saying to us all, he says, be ready all the time. Have your loins girded with righteousness and generosity like we talked about last week, about giving to the measure of man's faith, how much he gives rather than how much he gets. And be ready. Your loins girded with righteousness and your minds prepared by generosity and not attached to the things of this world. This is what God's saying to us. Be ready. Keep the light on. Jesus could come at any time. He says there's an unconditional truth about this preparedness, he says. It's something that everybody must be in the state. This is an unconditional truth. When he comes and knocks on that door for you, and it may be on the way out of this service, it could be 10 years from now, it could be 50. It could be as a result of a year and a half battle with cancer that guts your body and tests your soul. It could be in a moment that your passing comes upon you. He says the unconditional truth is this, that when the Lord comes, you must be immediately ready. Immediately. There's no time to prepare anymore. Your preparation time is gone. It's over. It's ended. The second he comes. And since it's something that will come unannounced, perhaps we need to be ready immediately when he comes. It says we need, he says, and ye yourselves need to be. Ye yourselves need to be like unto men that wait for their Lord. That when he comes and knocks, they may open to him immediately. He comes without warning. He comes at a moment. And we have to be ready to greet him at that time. If we are ready, he gives these great words. He says, not only is it my good pleasure to give you the kingdom, but to the ones that are ready to open immediately to him, this is what he says, blessed are those servants whom when the Lord comes finds watching. These are the ones that are blessed. These are the ones that were aware the others passed away, as it says in verse 46, six verses after we end this gospel today. The servant that was ready immediately was in the presence of the Lord, happy, waited on by the Lord. Everything's provided. No want, no cares, no needs anymore. God is there to provide everything. Immediately when he comes, you must be ready. And bless are you if you're ready when he comes. Bless are you if you've sold everything not accumulated. That's really hard to hear. I don't know if you guys can appreciate that. Think about that for a minute. He could come tonight. Are we ready? Or are we holding on to things waiting for him to come some other time? Well, the Lord says this. He says, and he says, if he shall come in the second watch, coming back from a wedding is kind of particular, right? You go to a wedding, you come back a few hours later. It's going to be probably in the daytime still. Not too many weddings that go until 3 a.m., but he says, and if he comes at another time, like in the second watch or the third watch, that's the middle of the night. That's the period from like midnight to like, what, 6 a.m. or something like that. So it's, it's, it's in the middle of the night. It's a time of darkness, usually stillness, not much going on. He says, it's one thing to wait in the daytime. It's another thing to wait when it's not convenient. To keep the light on and be sitting at the door ready to open at 2 a.m quite different than 10 a.m. 
And so the Lord says, there's a warning here. He could come at a time when the conditions of your life make it difficult for you to be watching and be ready. It could be a time of great sickness, a time of great loss, a time of societal calamity. It might very well be at a time when you're not ready as you'd like to be. So, he says, whenever I come, it's just the second watch, the third watch, or in the middle of the day, you need to be ready. It's a frightening thing to concentrate on for just a moment. That the lowest point of your life, from here, to, from here forward in your life, could be the moment when God decides to get you. What's that moment going to look like? Not the great moments. Not when you're sitting in church with your heart touched, you're praising God. But in a dark time of your life, I was frightened when I thought about this, and I, I thought of this myself before I preached this. When he says be ready to immediately open, that needs to be at any time. In other words, your low point can't be that bad. Christianity is very concerned with your end. Very concerned. Your beginning, yeah, we're concerned with that. There's got to be a beginning to get to a good end, right? But we're really concerned. I'm a, as a priest, I'm really concerned with my end, with your end. And so is Jesus. That's why he's saying this today to us. He's very concerned. And he wants you to know that there's no time you can really afford to be in a bad place. Because it might be in that second watch in your life, a down point, a dark point, when God comes. Don't let that down point be the very low. Don't get off mark. Don't forget what he said about being ready, about selling those things that are around you, entangling you. Getting away from your earthly possessions by giving alms, by being righteous, by being holy, by praying. That's the warning he gives you. It might be at your low time, not necessarily the time of your choice. Jesus comes. Well, he says this, he wraps things up. He says, if the good man of the house had known what time the thief was going to come, he would have been ready for him. And the thief wouldn't have broken in. You know, I think there's a warning there. For us, we're getting it right now. It's this that you know Jesus is coming. You know it could be immediately. You know you need to be ready. And so he says, You better be watching. You need to be awake. You need to be spiritually alert. You need to be involved in spiritual combat. Yes, sometimes you may be lose, but never lose heart that God is with you and you can be successful in your Christian life no matter what the circumstances might be. He says, prepare. You know. He says, so knowing this simple truth that you're supposed to prepare, you really have to believe in the king. And if your desire at home, man, is really to be with him, he that wants you to be with him, it's his good pleasure that you be there, then you need to take this story today seriously. You need to live in a fashion that's, that's in line with what the Lord is teaching us today. Because he says this, he says, closing. Be therefore also ready. Because of all these blessings, because I'm going to open the door to you at that hour when you think not. He says, because of all this, because I come in an hour when I think you think not, be ready. Be ready to meet me. It's, he says, be ready also to, like the man who anticipated the thief coming. Just like him. If Jesus told you today, at 12.30 p.m., right after the service, you're going to be killed in a car accident. You'd want to be ready. Well, Jesus doesn't give you the time. He doesn't even give you the hour. Sometimes he gives you the year. Sometimes he doesn't. You don't know what he's going to do. So you need to be like the man, like that man who was told the thief is coming, who is ready. You need to be like that. Jesus says be ready. Our society today is trying to seduce us, I think into preparing for the worst that might come, even scripturally prophesied worst things. We're trying to be seduced by the society of the devil, away from the simple truths of being ready for God, to meet God, God's way. Maybe you're prepping for the apocalypse, but you're doing exactly the opposite of what God says to do. God says the way to get ready for your end, or for the end of your society or civilization is always to be 
very close to him. It's the exact opposite of what the world tells you. They say, accumulate more. Have the bunker full, the gold in the vault, everything ready, and you'll get through. Jesus says, give everything away. Make other people's journey pleasant and impoverish yourself in this world. That's how you prepare. It's the exact opposite. Think about that. Now, Jesus isn't saying don't have food in the cupboard. But he's saying don't let your heart be set on everything that's contrary to what I say in this very important gospel. Don't be distracted, brothers and sisters. Don't be focused on things of this world. Don't let the gospel commands we've heard today fall on deaf ears. Be ready. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Um.